everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about this paper, The Surface Topography of Silicon Breast Implants Mediates the Foreign Body Response in Mice, Rabbit, and Humans. Is there anyone who looked at this paper before? No? Okay. So, yeah, this paper is published by the Robert Langer Group in MIT. So their basic concept is they want to analyze the breast implant. As you know, breast implant, uh, especially women, they are when they are suffering from breast cancer or they want to make some augmentation, increase their volume, they can put this silicone inside of their breast. So there are two types. One is saline inside. The other one is or silicone, but the both of them, the outer surface, outer material is silicone. Silicone is PDMS. And the point is that control is normal PDMS. When you make the PDMS mold, PDMS specimen, and then you are when you use some glass or some Teflon mold or any kind of mold, the original surface can be smooth, right? But, but the problem is when you put this breast implant and then when the surface is smooth, they can move inside your body. It's not perfect for the function and then per not perfect for the beauty. So they want to make some uh, roughness surface to fix the breast implant in the location of certain breast location. Okay, this is their, yeah, their feature, why they want to make different surface roughness in the breast implant, in PDMS. So control is maybe, initially, this control is released in the market, okay? But well, suddenly, the plastic surgeon or patient, they argue about, oh, they are moving inside, inside my body, inside the patient body. So, so company, they make the roughened version. This is called BioCell. So they are using salt leaching method. Simply salt leaching that you put some NaCl salt inside of the this PDMS. And then after molding, you immerse this PDMS plus salt in the water. And the salt is dissolved. And then the PDMS mold can have salt crystal structure, right? So this is a simple salt leaching method. Leaching means dissolution. They remove the salt inside of the material. So biosteel first release, the point is that uh, actually the function is okay. And then morphologically is fine. The problem is, the problem was revealed five and 10 years later, which means they can cause some probability of cancer. So now this, this, this product is rejected from the FDA. And then another company, or same company, they use another type of the silicon, so which has lower roughness than this biocell, but relatively high. But there are many versions from 3, 14, 32, 40, 53 micrometer of roughness. And then from the ISO standard, this two less than five micrometer is called smooth surface. And then less than 40 micrometer, micro texture, over 50, macro texture, ISO standard. So this bio series rejected from market and others are also commercial available. And then there are reports, this smooth silk is the best without any complication and then any problem from the patient, this is this is well-known product as a best product for the breast implant. But people don't know why. So this is a study why, this is the reason why this robot Langer group started this experiment. So from 2011, the reports about the breast implant complication and then patient response and then surgeon's response 
were reported 2011. And then after that, I think that they starting this experiment and they published in 2021. So, and then the high surface roughness over 80 micrometer from the salt leaching method, what kind of cancer is detected? Normally, when we think about the breast cancer, breast cancer is normally released from the breast gland or inside of the stromal tissue. This is a breast cancer. But when you implant the silicone, PDMS, and then this cancerous region is coming from this area, okay? This area, when you enlarge it, and then this is their histology. So this is a, this is a lymphoma cell. So you can see large, large number of the nucleus and less cytosol. This is a typical T cell. So this is called anaplastic large cell lymphoma, referred to group of non-Hawking lymphoma in which aberrant means abnormal T cell proliferate uncontrollably. Okay, this kind of disease is reported. So this is called breast implant association ALCL, anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So BIA ALCL is largely detected from the high stiffness area, but the mechanism is not revealed perfectly. And then another thing, another complication is that even without any cancerous cancer, but from the patient, from the people, they argue about, okay, initially, this breast implant is okay. When you touch it, it's fine, and it's firm. But over time, capsule contraction occur, which means that uh, you can feel some hard, hard things or some ripple or band in your chest. It's uncomfortable uh, for your partner, and for by yourself. So this is a region well, and then this kind of capsulation or contraction of the fibrosis occur depending on the roughness of the PDMS product. So people want to look at what kind of mechanism is underlying. So one of them is silicon implant induces a specific local immune reaction, which is orchestrated by macrophage adhesion and spreading mediated by the interq one production activation of a TR per cell, especially TH1 and TH17 cell, and myofibroblast activation that result in fibrosis. So there are certain reported. One is macrophage is involved. The other one is TH1 cell, which is heavily activated under M1 inflammatory condition. TH17 is another inflammatory T cell. They are highly detected but there is no systemic study about this capsulation from the different surface roughness implant. And then before going to the paper, let's look at our T cell. T cell is initially when they are produced in thymus, we can call it TH0 without any activation. But when they are gathering this certain cytokine, in Turkey 12, they are differentiated to TH1 cell, which is high, heavily related to M1 inflammation, macrophage, pro-inflammatory macrophage. And then they secrete interferon gamma, and then Tbat is transcription factor. And then when TH1 is meeting in Turkey 4, they differentiate to TH2, and then they release in Turkey 4 again. And then they are heavily related to M M2 macrophage, anti-inflammatory. Okay, and then when TH0 meet TJ beta plus interleukin 6, they are differentiate to TH17. Interleukin 17 is released. This transcription factor is activated. And then we have very important another T cell, T lex cell. T lex cell, they are typically Fox P3 and CD25 double positive. And then, not 100%, but most of people say that the t rex cell, their major role is repress the M1, and then relatively boosting M2, okay? So we can think that 
when you implant something in your body, and then when TH1 is highly activated, which means they are heavily involved in inflammation condition, and then highly related to the MO macrophage. But this TH1 is activated over time, like for two months, four months, eight months. Actually, in normal case, T Rex cell, they should suppress the TH1. And then they convert TH1 to TH2. But when TH1 is maintained, which means that it's impaired of the T regulation, T Rex cell. So this is the basic concept between the T cell and then implant of the material. So this is another uh, figure they mentioned that okay from the th1 t cell and the macrophage this kind of cytokine release that they can affect the uh, fox p3 t-rex cell that this t-rex cell after taking the cytokine they boosting m2 and then try to suppress the th1 and th17 while promoting th2 so this is some one of the major mechanism and crosstalk between T-Rex cell and M1 and M2 macrophage. So we can easily imagine that T-Rex cell is some kind of uh, orchestra director, something like. The T-Rex is director of the whole immune system. They can regulate M1, M2, TH1, TH2, TH17 as well. This is a, another feature. When you focus on M1 and M2, so this M1 can be boosted by many immune cells, like mast cell, B cell, neutrophil, and TH1 cell, of course. But M2, T-Rex cell, TH2 cell, eosinophil, NK2 cell, they are activated. So we already know that the class of today's title is adaptive immunity. And then the opposite of the adaptive immunity is innate immunity. Innate immunity is mostly governed by macrophage and then partially this eosinophil, NK cell, and mast cell, and neutrophil. And then adaptive immunity is coming from B cell, T cell. Adaptive immunity is simply we can imagine this is some antibody antigen reaction. And then except the antibody antigen reaction is innate immunity. So, but here I'm showing that the crosstalk between innate immunity and the adaptive immunity. So people from the bio biomaterial scientists, they want to look at the interaction between adaptive and innate immunity to regulate and to determine the fate of the implant, success, succeed of the implant. So let's look at our paper. Before that, I'm going to show some video. So this is uh, one of the implant from the patient. Uh, sorry, they implant PDMS with high stiffness. And then they collect, and then they check their fibrosis. Here, very firm and like thick fibrosis happen above the medium surface. It is very sticky and then very strong. It's a high stiffness. And then another one I can show that. So they can show the Velcro effect. Velcro is, you know Velcro, when you use, when you wear some clothes, there's some Velcro reaction. Like, how can I say? Chikchiki, chikchiki, velcro. Yeah. Okay, velcro is. Yeah, that one. Sorry. Velcro reaction.
Yeah, this kind of thing. Very cool. You know it. So here they can show another video, another Japanese material. Microsoft also, you also can see this capital. kind of fibrous layer on the top of the PDFs. After it has a slight buffering effect, not as attached as Biosol, but that's it. Then, Microcell video, also has a thin inner capsule. So they want to say that some capture is cool. There's a slight buffering effect, the not as attached as Biosol, that's it. And then, they want to say that this is double capture. Microcell also has a thin... But from the optical image, it's not easy to see double capsule, three weeks wrapping around but the equator, and it's got a velcro effect. This is very here. sticky. Even Again, very that easy prominently to displayed in three weeks. So when you imagine this so you know, fibrous double layer is deposited on your PDMS, but when you have this PDMS inside of your breast or your body, you feel uncomfortable. This is a major reason why people want to make different surface treatment to reduce this kind of fibrosis. Okay, let's look at our paper. So first, uh, this upper one is commercially available product and then they enlarge the surface, smooth, originally marketed. And then later, this biocell, salt reaching, you can see typical NACL salt morphology, right? And then this another and then this upgrade version, and then they are using different treatment of the mold. So basic concept is how you can make the different surface of the PDMS. The strategy is that you can make different surface of the mold. Let's say when you want to use Teflon mold, you treat Teflon mold surface, like nano surface, micro surface, and then if you pour the PDMS silicone on that mold, you can get this kind of different surface roughness. This is the basic concept. But when you use the glass, maybe it's absolutely smooth surface we can get. But when you use some, when you use different roughness surface of the mold, depending on that, you can get the negative impression of the, this surface. Anyhow, this upper one is when you see smooth little texture, more texture, and then abrupt topology, then we can minimize, miniaturely made the smooth mold, smooth silk mold, mold, blah, blah, blah. So we want to mimic this commercial product in homemade product. So they are using similar or same methodology, but they have to make in small size. Cause the human size, they implant them in rabbit. But, but for knockout study, they have to use mouse. You cannot implant the large volume of the PDMS inside of the mouse, fat pad. So this is the reason why they have to make this miniature size in lab scale, and then they analyze the surface roughness by the measurement machine. Smooth, very smooth, roughen a little bit more. You can see, and then relatively this miniature also they have similar topology. And then this is their quantification of average roughness. 0, 04 <coughs> up to 83 from the commercial product, and then they almost mimic this average roughness from the miniature 04, 15, 30, and 90, right? And then they check the composition. Composition should be same because they are, are from the same PDMS, right? Carbon, oxygen, silicon, platinum. Why they check the platinum? Platinum is used for accelerating the polymerization. And then people say that when the platinum is remaining inside of the PDMS, they can cause the cytotoxicity. So they want to check the non-detection of the platinum. 
in PDMS. And this is from commercial, from homemade, same composition. No change among the groups. Okay. And then they start to experiment. First, they implant their human size PDMS inside of the fat pad in rabbit. Let's see how they do. Like that. They, during anesthesia, using the dozer fat pad. Fat pad is, you know, in your body, fat is some certain located. Mm. So from the rabbit, this dozer side, the fat is fat certain surface is located. So they mer they implant the PDMS under the fat pad to mimic the breast. Okay? Breast also fat and under the fat pad we have to implant the breast breast silicone like this. This is the fat and then under the fat you have to implant it. So like that, they mimic this surgery. So they prepare this commercial one. So we can easily imagine, we cannot implant this large size to the mouse. So we have to make the small size in homemade. And then from the, you can see uh, right after, maybe when you select certain three weeks, one month, two months, you can easily see their morphology, fibrosis. So control, you can see little this kind of white one, and smooth, let's see. So this is from all five. You can see little like something there. But compared to control, smooth silk. Smooth silk is the best one, which have four micrometer roughness. They are very transparent, right? Very shiny, which means that not much of this fibers has happened. And then another like material, velvet, more, lot, more, more roughen surface than this smooth silk. You can see this kind of white one, or this lipo, and then five, this kind of fiber fiber structure, you can see it. And then another things, this kind of mm, fibrous this lipo band, you can see many times. And then also this severe encapsulation, you can observe. The microcell, similarly. Yeah. This, so this kind of white one, we can see this is fibrosis layer, capsule, biocell as well, mm, very sticky, right? From the movie you can see, and then here, uh, initially you can imagine, oh, they're not good, okay? So from these optical images, you can easily recognize your material is good or not, okay? So this uh, gross anatomy is very important. So before, just people sometimes they do histology work, ITC, HNMT, they do many things, but the real picture can be easily detected from this optical gross, ana gross anatomy analysis, okay? So this is their summary. So their time point is maybe three weeks, six months. Yeah. This is. Oh, sorry, maybe. A, three weeks, B, six months. Upper one, three weeks. Below one, six months. Smooth silk, very shiny. And then no, no much of the fibrosis capsule. But smooth, this kind of capsule, you can see it here, three weeks as well. The velvet here, here, capsule. Silk text, capsule, microcell, capsule, biocell, a lot. And then from histology, actually, we are not, not the expert of histology, so they draw the line. This is PDMS location. And then this is their under muscle area. And then this is fibrosis layer. Smooth, smooth circuit is very thin. And then from velvet, cell text, microcell, biocell, you can see a little more thickened fibrous layer. And then from the silk text to biocell, you can see red line and then orange line, which means that they show double capsule layer. Okay? This is more dense. Dense is outer. Below is more 
sparse area. So you can see this kind of two different capture area from high roughened surface. And then empty staining also you can see it same manner. Sorry, outer is dense, yeah, inner is yeah, sparse area. And then from D is six months, long time. Long time, also relatively smooth silk have very thin layer. And then both smooth velvet other, this is muscle. So above the muscle is fibrosis layer. So you can see compared to smooth silk, they are more thick, thickened, okay. And for empty staining, easily we can recognize muscle area above the muscle. This is muscle, and then this is fibro fibrosis, capsule thickness, okay? Then we enlarge. And then this stereo quantification. Quantification, you can see overall capsule thickness from three, top bottom, what is the top bottom? Okay, let's see the histology. Okay, from here, when you implant this, when you do section like this, this is top, this is the bottom. Bottom can contact the muscle, right? Top should contact the fat. So top and bottom can be, can have different fibrosis layer, so that is why top, bottom. Top has more thickened fibrosis layer, and then Smooth silk velvet, they're relatively good compared to smooth also, but other high roughened, they have more capsule thickness, top and bottom. And then they relatively continuously express this high capsule thickness on high stiffness area, right? And then they analyze the RNA sequencing from the tissue from three weeks from the rabbit to know, okay, what kind of thing are happening? So they don't know. Maybe they, some literature say that macrophage, T regulation, TH1, but they want to overall investigate it. So they do RNA, this is nanostring assay. So this is not exactly RNA sequencing, but anyhow, this is another version to analyze the gene expression level from the tissue. But they say that more easily you can see and then very high resolution. But a little bit pricey than the RNA sequencing. Here, smooth three weeks, this I part is compared to this, when just you focus on smooth silk. Silk has less expression, especially this area. This area is related to the interkins, and CCL5, TNF alpha, all relate to the inflammatory cytokine or their markers. So we can say that smooth silk compared to others, they have less inflammatory gene expression. Okay? But actually we cannot 100% correlate this tendency and then this capture tendency. Cause smooth silk velvet, both of them relatively fine than others. But in case of velvet, uh, not much of different compared to the, this, this bio cell, even. Okay? So they only focus on smooth silk. It's better than others. And then, uh, and then certain inflammatory genes are downregulated. But they don't know why. And then they checked the, another set set related to the M2 inflammation, RG1, interleukin 13, and interleukin 10. And the Fox P3 is a marker of the T regulation cell. So those kind of M2 related, anti inflammatory related gene are highly activated in silk compared to others. Okay? So they, they just, how they define these two? From literature survey. This one is about the M1 inflammation, this is about the M2 and then T regulation cell, and then they want to say that smooth silk has least capsule thickness. And then the phenomenon from the gene expression level is M1 inflammatory signal suppressed while they have higher anti-inflammatory and the T-regulatory cascade 
they can observe. And then here, and now they want to know the mechanism more. So here, they implant them in mouse. And as I told previously, they cannot implant the large size. So from now, they change their name to the roughness of the miniature. Zero is smooth, four is silk, 15, 30, 90, yeah, depending on the matched product. This is their histology and empty staining. It's not easy to see from these this, uh, less magnified images. So when you see high magnified images, this is capsule. Okay, this area capsule, but relatively four micrometer, very less thickness. Fifteen, this is capsule, more capsule, more capsule. So they quantify again, three and six weeks. Along with the rabbit study using human size silicon, depending on the roughness, four have less capsule thickness, while 30 and 90 has a large capsule thickness. And then they look at detail about the macrophage. M1 macrophage, CD6A, CD11B, part of cell per volume is highly maintained in Jero, but not from 4 and 15. Interestingly, this Jero is higher than 13 and 90. But when you see the, this CD4, CD25, Fox P3, is a T regular cell marker from the fact study, they found out all have high unregulated. When you combine them together, in case of four, which has least capsule thickness, they are less M1 inflammation, while they are relatively certain, certain number of the TLX cell. But in case of 13 90, even though TLX cell is high, their M1 is sustained. So this is their finding feature. They try to link to what is the major law about the capsulation. So we cannot say this macrophage only or T-Rex cell only as a player of the capsulation, right? From these images, usually we cannot say that. So they do the RNA sequencing, single cell level. They only choose zero, smooth, four, silk, 90, if they rejected high roughened surface, PDMS, and then single cell analysis for further investigation. And then they divide it like B cell, T and NK cell, dendrite cell, macrophage neutrophil. Then they found out that compared to four, zero and nine, what is the difference, especially four and nine? B cell number increase, NK and T cell and K cell number increase. While neutrophil is similar, macrophages, interestingly, they are highly detected in four. But they point out that T cell, B cell, abundantly is located in this 90 micrometer from the tissue. And this is there, compared to zero and four, both of them have a similar feature, which are relatively better than 90. But when they, when they compare four and 90, 90 has highly expressed or less expressed gene, you can see. And then they want to know what kind of gene is changed between 4 and 90. They found out that STAT1 is a pro-inflammatory transcription factor for most kind of the immune cell, neutrophil, macrophage, NK cell, and B cell, and T cell and B cell all are highly activated in 90. So we can imagine that, oh, 90, we don't know, but the feature is macrophage, inactive immune cell, as well as active immune cell are highly activated. And the CXCL10, CXC, CXC which is recruiting the B cell, T cell from the macrophage and neutrophil, those are highly activated in 90. And Interferon gamma is a uh, pro inflammatory signal secreted to the T cell, also highly activated in 90. 
So combined together, we can say that um, immune cell activated, all immune cell. And then, especially the macrophage and neutrophil, the initial innate immune cell, they try to call the T-cell T-cell continuously. And then because of that, interferon gamma from the T-cell are secreting. So this kind of cascade can play a role for making high capsule thickness in 90 micrometer. So their time, this time point is uh, two weeks. Yeah, they do RNA sequencing two weeks. So two weeks they do RNA sequencing, but they observe this feature three and six weeks. Okay. And then from this um, HNI, GSEA analysis, they can see more interferon reactum and the inflammatory response marker is highly enriched in 90 micrometer single cell. And then, what is their finding? Oh, T cell, B cell number is high, and then T cell, B cell is activated. So their reasoning might be T cell, B cell can be a major, can play major role. And then, especially, they target T cell. So here, they, they're using the mouse, but one is normal mouse, and the other one is uh, nude mouse. Nude mouse means they remove the T cell. Okay, there's no, nude, no T cell in nude mouse. But ABC, just from normal mouse, they look at more detail, and then they check 0 and 4 micrometer. Actually here, it's a little bit interesting for me, because if I were the researcher, I will choose 4 and 90, right? But because 90 are FDA rejected already, so to see the significant difference between the groups, if I were them, I would choose 4 and 90. But for some reason, they choose 0 and 4 to look at the continuous fiber capsule formation analysis over six months. They implant PDMS in mouse and wait six months and look at the capsule. Over time, capsule is not that much enlarged, a little bit shrink, but maintain the high capsule thickness over 30 micrometer. In case of zero, smooth surface, but roughen surface and this silk surface, relatively lower, around 100 micrometer. Then when they check the M1 macrophage, macrophage is highly maintained in zero. So also this is a little bit opposite to the single cell analysis. Here, single cell analysis, you can see four is higher than zero, right? Macrophage number. But here again, they show macrophage because this is not pa macrophage, but M1 macrophage. So M1 macrophage is more detected in zero. And then Fox P3 T cell, they always highly unregulated in four micrometer, up to six months. And then they want to remove the T cell and then to check the reaction. So this is normal control, zero. Ah, sorry. So this is the nude mouse, zero and four. So previously, when you look, this is three weeks. Three weeks, upper one is normal mouse, 400 and 100 micrometer capsule, right? But here, zero, 400, but suddenly four micrometer silk structure from the bottom, 100, they go up to the 400 when they remove the T cell in the body, okay? And then this is, this is the meaning of T cell, they govern the capsulation, okay? Which means another, another sentence is that they don't know why, but four micrometer, they are, uh, four micrometer, they are happy for regulating T cell in a good way. So their capsule thickness can be suppressed. But when they remove T cell, maybe T rex cell action or another T rex cell mediated TH1 or innate immune cell reaction is gone. So they retrieve to the 300, 400 capsule level. So you can see 
this is PDMS area above the muscle, this thickness is relatively yeah, maintained here. Here, maintained. Oh, sorry, uh, this area. Then they check again the nanostream investigation to see the feature of the gene expression level. When you look at the only this S, S is silk, 4 micrometer, 4 micrometer in T cell knockout mouse, this inflammatory cytokine level is relatively lower, especially this, this panel is lower than others, but this panel is go back to a similar way when the T cell is knocked out. Okay, and then this panel is totally from the top to the bottom totally reversed. And then when you look at uh, this one, this panel is similar to the previous rabbit. This one is related to the anti-inflammation and the T-reg cell of T regular cell of activation. Interleukin 17 and interleukin 10 and then yeah, RG1, this box P3, they are highly activated in 4 micrometer, but they are all relatively going down in T knockout tissue. So they want to say that T cell can mediate this 4 micrometer mediated good, less fibrosis phenomenon. And then as a last, they want to link human tissue. So they start from the rabbit and then mouse, and they start to know the little mechanism. T cell is mediated, so they want to check the so human sample. Smooth, smooth silk, 4 micrometer, bio cell, is a 550 or 90 micrometer, roughen. And then here, we cannot see clearly, but from the thickness quantification, smooth silk, maybe this size, relatively less capture area thickness, but this biocell smooth, more large capture thickness from the patient-derived tissue. Because when they, when the patient visit the plastic department, when they do some cancer surgery or remove implant and then re-implantation of the silicon surgery, they collect the tissue at the time. So they can analyze it. And then they again look at in detail about the in inflammatory cell infiltration in tissue. But actually, uh, they didn't mention it specifically. But they just showed them, compared to silk, other have more inflammatory cell. But from my view, I cannot see very clearly these images. And then from DNA, this they just show them, also they do nanostream, the RNA expression level. And then they want to compare. This is a whole different patient, one, two, three, four, five, different patient. Different patient from silk, smooth, and bio cell, and analyzed. So they found out that smooth silk and smooth relatively similar, but this part is a little different. But bio cell, this part is less expressed, especially in Turkey 10, in Turkey 17, and then yeah, this kind of anti-inflammatory gene expression is less activated in bio cell, while smooth and smooth silk, they are highly maintained. And then when they look at the patient from the same patient, ND is non-disease because when they remove the implant from the breast, you cannot do surgery only one side. You have to do both sides. So ND is, let's say, left, disease is right. They remove and then see the picture. ND is healthy, this disease. When you look at the healthy one, like this picture, and disease, this picture. Actually, this is not totally matched to the left one, right? Here, this bio cell, which have higher risky, which have high, higher risky of cancer, they have less anti-inflammatory expression. But here, 
disease one, I mean, sorry, non disease one have healthy one has less. So they cannot conclude, co conclude completely why this kind of change happened. But they, want, they just point out that healthy and disease one have different gene expression feature relatively. And then this BIA, breast implant association anaplastic yeah, T cell lymphoma, also have this feature. So this is their conclusion. So for the this clinical histology, they cannot 100% correlate their previous finding. They didn't see any T cell in this one, and then the M1 decreased, M2 increased. It's not matched to the, this clinical sample, but they show them anyhow PDMS reaction in human body can be different among the different surface roughness. Okay, let's go to the supplementary. Supplementary, how they show them. So this I show you. And then this is a report from 2011 from the FDA. So reported contracture rate. Contracture is some complication of the implant. Like when you feel some capsule, or some thin band. This is some reported contracture. Smooth surface, 18% for 10 year. Smooth silk, zero. Velvet, zero. Silk, 30 micrometer, 50, 80. There are high abundance of complication happening. 2011 release. So this study, after following this FDA study, they did the experiment. And then this is their quantification of their rabbit study. Tension lines rippling. Tension line rippling, three eight weeks, six months, one year. Silk, very little. But control, a little bit larger. But silk takes a biocell a lot. So this is their clinical feature in the rabbit, and then they are matched to the this clinical report, right? Almost similar. And that is their quantification from top button capsule layer three and six months. Over time, a little bit going down, but the tendency is maintained. Lowest in silk, highest in biocell, and middle a control. And then this their patient, healthy ALCL. And, and then the one thing is that. Why is the difference? So when you look at the roughness, roughness, you can also consider this squeeze. Squeeze is plus from the average surface, they are going up. Minus, they are going down. So biocell, which has salt leaching method, they have going down. Salt leaching is, you can easily imagine, salt leaching side, they are under, right? So that is why squeeze is minus. But others, Plus or minus a little bit similar, okay. But smooth silk, this is positive, which means that uh, maybe they are using imprinting molding method. So their mold is already under on the line. So this smooth silk has positive feature. And then friction coefficient. Why they check? As I told you, why they want to roughen the surface? After implantation, they do not want to move the PDMS, silicone. So high friction means more resistant to move. So from the from point of the resistance, biocell is the best. Static is static condition. Dynamic is while they're moving. They are the best. But from the biological picture, they are worst, so they were rejected from the FDA. Okay, and then another like kilotoxic surface area density of peaks and roughness are feature like this. You can see smooth silk have peaks a lot, oh, many peaks, and then the surface area is large in biocell, and then the kilotoxic is higher in smooth. Mm. 
Oh, okay. This is a biocell, a miniature salt loss, salt reaching method. PU form imprint, salt reaching technique. So you can see from the commercial one and the homemade one have similar widths of the salt reaching topology. And then they analyze by XPS. And then I show you this one. And then this is their finding from the rabbit, I told you. Here, the histology show them smooth silk. They are less large, this area. This is less muscle, okay? And then from the top, very thin. Here, this large, right? So, so always, when you look at the fibrosis, when, when you report this paper, you can learn many things. This also two layer of, and then here, this muscle, so maybe this, only this range is their caption, short term. Now this may be long term, yes. You can see very, compared to this smooth silk, it's relatively very shiny, and then you can see little this capsule, but not many. But here, velvet is also fine, but here you can see very like thick white tissue. You can see and a very thickened capsule, microcell, also a lot of capsule. You can see biocell, double capsule on all five biocell. And then this from the mouse. Mouse, you, their thickness, thickness is lesser than, tissue volume is lesser than the previous rabbit. So you can see overall tendency, control silk, Veltex, Siltex, microcell, biocell. Microcell, at a glance, you, we can see they, are, they have large capsule thickness. And then they also analyze inner and outer capsule thickness. These three, they cannot find inner and outer. Only they found from these three, high roughness stiffness. So in and out, top and bottom, upper side to the fat pad, downside near to the near to the muscle. They have little different capsule thickness, in and out. Also six months, they are maintained. And then the thing is that Biocell, the high lopfund PDMS, you can see the debris of the PDMS inside of the rabbit tissue. So somehow, be, because of they, uh, they didn't mention detail why this kind of debris happening from the degradation of PDMS or from the manufacturer process, the salt reaching, when you do, a certain part can be weakened. So during some degradation, they are easily, easily released. They didn't mention detail, but we can imagine that. But this kind of debris and then multinucleotide giant cell, you can see from the tissue. But control and silk surface, you cannot see any kind of this debris and then no multinuclear giant cell. But even smooth, also this debris, you can see. And then velvet, also you can see a little bit. This one, this one. This one, this one. And then, Siltex, very big size, also, here. And then, so, sometimes, they are, in, this debris can be encapsulated by the multinuclear giant cell, like that, okay. Here, debris, multinuclear giant cell. Here, multinuclear giant cell, and then debris, okay. The microcell, also this part, debris. Multinucleotide cell, debris here. This is typical, like granuloma, also you can see. Uh, this is one debris there. By macrophage, they are making capsule and they're making epithelial like granuloma histological feature. Biocell, yeah, here. Also, debris, multinuclear cell, 
here in capsule. So from this point, when you fabricate your material, and then suddenly your material debris is released easily inside of tissue, that can be artifact of the tissue generation. They can cause severe inflammatory signal, and then that can affect your result. So that is why when you, so when you cause something on the material like CNT or what else, seria, any kind of thing, but when so suddenly this kind of coating is released inside of tissue, that can be a player of the inflammation. That can cause macrophage signal a lot, amon cytokine signal a lot, and then that can affect your final result. So that is why reviewer and many people ask the coating or your material stability in tissue. So for supporting that notion, how, what kind of experiment you can do? You can do HNE, and uh, you can do subcutaneous study, like three weeks or one month, two months, and then check is there any inflammatory signal is ongoing or they decrease, and is there any debris around there? And then we can easily find out that they're okay. This, this is the reason why we can do many subcutaneous studies to check the tissue stability. And then from the IHC, red one is alpasma, is an activated fibroblast for making the capsule, fibro, fibro, fibrostic capsule. And the red and green one is a macrophage, palm macrophage marker. So palm macrophage is less detected in silk, but others, especially others, they have high alpasma but actually, alpha sigma number, they, sh they show no difference between them group. So capsule, actually the capsule level can be from the alpha sigma fibroblast activation. But it's not only, the number is same, but the T cell or immune cell number can be major in this feature. So only green one is less detected in silk compared to others. And then top, bottom, control, silk, biocell, they continue to show this one, one year rabbit. And then they're like similar. Okay, so this is a very good study. When you want to make the miniature, how could you decide the miniature size? It, they are very rationally approach it. They, they measure the width and height of the human chest. This is their centimeter. They also check the mouse. And then they found out the ratio, human mouse. For the width, 12 for change. Height, 8 for change. And then, how they make it? The original human implant is provided by the companies around this 15 and 5 centimeter. And then, they divided 15 by 12 to make 1.3. Very logically, they make the miniature, okay? So this is a good example. And then 8.5, 4.8 divided by 8. So 0.6. And then for the mouse, as I told you, we didn't implant the, this PDMS, just any kind of subcutaneous tissue. They implant only under the fat pad. Okay? Fat pad, this is the fat pad area of the mouse. Not in the center area, little edge. So they implant this little miniature below the fat pad. Okay. So this is their miniature to put. And then this is how they do the facts to find out the T leg cell percentage. Unstained and control, similarly, 1.8%. Silk, 10%. So T leg cell, they highly detected. CD4, POX3, CD25, positive cell. CD4 is macro for pan T cell, and the CD25 POX3 is macro for T leg. And then, single cell analysis study, another like for recognizing this is really T cell, this is really B cell. For doing that, is there macro for each specific cell? This macro for T cell, CD19 B cell, CSF1R and FN1 for macrophage, and then LY6G for neutrophil, dendrite cell, F53. And then they also check algal level. Here, 
interesting point is that iodine level is also high detected in 90. This is a little different from the nanostream expression level, right? In nanostream, iodine is high in four. So we can say that the single cell analytic and the total analytic from the tissue, they cannot match 100% always. So that is why they put this one in supplementary. But people already know that. They don't know why. And then Fox P3, the TLX cell um, regulation, as far as I see, also this is a little high, highly, um, highly um, regulated here, 90. Yes. And then this is P cell, it's also um, regulated here. Okay. And then they check the alpha smart, the activated fibroblast, and then FAP, another subtype of the fibroblast activator. Also, those are similar among the groups, two and four weeks. So no issue about the fibroblast. And then CD3 is, uh, oh, CD3 is, CD3, is pan, CD3 is pan, pan T cell, might be pan T cell. And then CD3 for, this is a T rex cell, 19 P cell, and this is, this is cytotoxic T cell. Yes, pan T cell, cytotoxic T cell, T rex cell, and the P cell. So they found out that there's no much significant difference among the groups, but they show the tendency uh, in high roughened tissue, they have relatively higher T cell number as well as cytotoxic T cell and then P cell as well. But they found out that significantly the cytotoxic T cell ratio, T rex cell to cytotoxic T cell ratio is high in four micrometer compared to other. So they can show this is one marker for determining the effect of the four micrometer. Cytotoxic T cell lorries, they kill the immune cell. They kill certain cell physically. And T leg cell is regulation, depress this kind of whole phenomenon. So their ratio can be correlated to the capsulation. And then this their uh, uh, cell type dependent RNA sequencing data. So 4 and 90, um, especially here, this part is a little different when you look at in detail. So from the mouse, yeah, how they measure it, yeah. From top, bottom, so you can see this uh, wrinkle area from six months, long time, or so you can see this capsule, uh, let's capture the silk. And then, yeah, this one. This is upper, this is bottom, okay. Right side, also you can imagine, there is a tissue, but it's too large, so they cut. So from here, control, Above the muscle area, this is all capsule, but capsule is a little less. Empty also you can see. And 10x level, 20x high resolution. The high resolution also you can see many inflammatory cells also maintained in 20. But less, a little less in silk for microbiology. So maybe they end. So also they do, they do another fact study to back up. And they found out that um, continuously macrophage is less detected in silk area on surface. And then no difference of the neutrophil. Neutrophil, no difference. Only macrophage number, 3, 6, 12x different. So actually, they screen out almost everything. And then this red one is alpha sma, fibroblast, green one is pan macrophage marker. Mm. Also, when you look at the, let's say, silk mold, silk mold knockout, yeah, smooth. So they compare to knockout mouse, so they find out 
this red signal and green signal relatively disappeared in knockout mouse. And then T-cell deficient retriever silk is not that much shiny compared to the normal mouse. Right? And then there are nanostring data and then video. So this is all of the exper experiment setup. So I want you to know, know how they approach it. So from the clinical point of view, they were, they were reported. Maybe some, some commercial product is rejected. And then there are some complication. So they want to know the mechanism. So from the rabbit, they found out similar thing happened. And then from the mouse, also similar thing happened. But to know the mechanism about the T roll, T cell roll, they use T cell knockout mouse. And then their decrease of capture in four micrometer retrieve to the similar to the control. And then they found out that T cell can be major player to control this reference dependent capsulation. But here they cannot, so their limitation is that actually they want to know how they can decrease the capsule in high stiffness, right? But even though they knock out the T cell, they didn't show any change. But from their finding, maybe if we add some T rex cell or TH1, TH2 cell in high stiffness area, maybe the capsulation is changed. Maybe we can say that T cell linked therapy for regulating the capsulation. I will introduce another paper next time about that approach. They inject the T cell and to prove their concept. Okay, so any question? Okay, before ending this lecture, let's read abstract together. Silicone is widely used in chronic implant and is generally perceived to be safe. However, textural breast implant have been associated with immune-related complications including malignancy cancer. Here, by examining for up to one year the foreign body reaction and capsule fibrosis, which triggered by the miniature or full-scale clinical approved breast implant, with different surface topography, average 0 to 90 micrometer, placed in memory of fat pad or mouse or rabbit, very long. Respectively, we show that surface topography mediate immune response to the implant. We also show that the surface surrounding human breast implant collected during revision surgery, surgeries also differently alter the individual immune response to the implant. Maybe they, they have to show they are using the clinical sample. So they mention it here, even though they cannot see very clear evidence to link them, right? Moreover, miniature implant with an average roughness of four can largely suppress the foreign body response and fibrosis but not in T-cell deficient mice. And that tissue surrounding this implant display higher level of immune suppressive FOX3 regulator T-cell. But here we can say that this FOX3 regulator T-cell, not only four micrometer, 90 or so they are highly unregulated, right? Our findings suggest that among the topographies investigated, implants with the average roughness of four micrometer provoke, reveal, the least amount of inflammation and foreign body response. So maybe for next project, we can imagine what kind of project they are going to do for further study. Maybe if, as I told you, they want to reverse the high capture to less capture for cell therapy. This is one approach. Another one is that they didn't reveal perfectly. They say that T cell is mandated that they can show. Well, which kind of T cell? T rex cell, TH1, TH2, cytokine T cell. For that, you have to use specific T cell knockout mouse. For example, when you use T cell deficient mouse, they already show, but cytokine T cell deficient mouse implant, and then change, maintain or not. When they use T rex cell deficient mouse, what happened? For example, if you use T cell deficient mouse, and then their four micrometer decrease of suppression is 
unregulated to the similar to the control, we can say that T rex are dependent. But, and then, next question is, how the T rex cell is properly regulated in 4 micrometer? Because 9 micro, 90 micrometer, they are not properly regulated. So this kind of question, they are coming again and again, and then, I'm not sure, but maybe they will publish soon about the next project. Okay, thank you.